Hello everyone and welcome to the channel, I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. Welcome to this tutorial on how to take off using the heads up guidance system or heads up display in the Boeing 737 of PMDG. Now I'm not flying hot equipped aircraft in real life myself so the content of this video is based on several real life operations manuals as well as discussions I've had with pilots using the actual HUD. So, there are a couple things we need to do first of all to adjust. Now, the first thing we need to adjust is our seating position. Obviously, as we are right now, we can't see anything on the HUD because the HUD display is made in a way that it is always going to show up at the same position. So, you can see that right here. This is the PMDG default point of view and we probably want to get ourselves a little bit more centered like we are right now. The next thing we need to do is to set up the head-up display to actually provide us with some guidance. In order to get roll guidance on the ground, we want to select the ILS frequency of the runway in use. And we've done so by selecting 10.9 on both sides over here. And we also need to select the courses to the course of the runway. The next thing we need to do is to actually adjust the modes in the head-up display. Make sure that you are in primary mode for the takeoff. Other modes are possible but not recommended to be used. Now let's just have a quick look into the table once more because it will tell us exactly the modes that we are supposed to use. And as we can see for takeoff the only recommended mode is the primary mode. So, Finally, we need to adjust the head-up display in order to match our runway requirements. We're currently standing here at intersection Alpha 5 of runway 14 left at Cologne Bonn Airport. And while the entire runway has a length of 3850 meter, the intersection is a little bit further down. So we actually need to select this on the heads-up display. So we press the runway button, which shows us length in meters, not in feet. And now we enter 3587, which is the declared takeoff distance from intersection Alpha 3, sorry, Alpha 5. Now, if we press the runway button once more, we get to the elevation field, and this needs to be adjusted to the airport elevation, which I've done already, so we don't need to do this anymore. Finally, we also select a glide slope angle in case we need to do an immediate return so that we have good guidance available on the heads up display. In our case, minus three is selected and that is all we need. With that, we are all set up for the takeoff. Let's quickly talk about the symbology then that we are going to see on the heads up display during the takeoff. There are a few different symbols that we should be aware of that matter for our departure. So if you go over, to the FCOM once more, then we can have a look into that. So, here is the uh, HUD symbology from the 737 FCOM once more, and I'm going to skip over most of this stuff except for what is actually important for the takeoff. And what is important over here is this the ground roll reference and we can see that shown in our heads up display over there already which is um, the symbol that we see right over here. Now this provides a reference for ground roll guidance during low visibility takeoff operation. It's displayed on the horizon line 3 degrees until 3 degrees of attitude are achieved. Next up we have the flight path symbol and that displays the actual flight path vector of the aircraft and Basically, as soon as we get our three degrees of pitch, the ground roll reference is going to change into the flight path symbol. Going a little bit further down, other stuff we need to be aware of is the pitch limit indication, which is this symbol that we see over here. And if we pitch our airplane all the way into this symbol, then we are going to activate the stick shaker. Another symbol that's important over here is the additional slip skid indicator, and that is going to show up during the takeoff run and that is displayed during takeoff or low altitude go around and it becomes especially important when we have an engine failure so that we can compensate correctly for the engine failure by centering this thing using the rudder. Now other important stuff over here include the speed error tape 
and the flight path acceleration symbol. But I've explained those already in the introduction video to the heads up display, so please have a look over there if you didn't do so yet. Apart from that, important is the tail strike pitch limit. Now that is this little symbol you see up here. And you are going to notice that our airplane symbol is going to get very close to this during the rotation. And this symbol is shown below 10 feet AGL when the pitch rate is too excessive. But you will notice that there is only a split second between liftoff and tail strike. So we are going to get close to this. But if we fly right into this, then we will occur a tail strike. The last symbol we should be aware of is the one down here, which is the Toga Pitch Target Line. And this is the dashed line that's going to show up, and this is going to tell us exactly how far to pitch the airplane up. Now, on this takeoff, that's probably going to be somewhere around 15 degrees of pitch, and we will fly our airplane symbol over here right into this Toga Pitch Line, which is the commanded pitch after takeoff. Thereafter, we'll also get the flight director cue showing, which is the symbol we see over here, and that symbol is going to basically tell us where to steer the airplane, and our target will be to take the airplane symbol and center the flight director within that symbol. So, the last thing we need to do before we are going to take off is to adjust the brightness of the heads-up display. We basically want the HUD to be just about bright enough that you can still see it, but you have to be able to see through it in order to view your runway, etc. The automatic brightness is not very good, as you can see. This is much too bright, so we'll go to manual mode over here, and we will turn this down until we get just about the information we need, while still being able to see the features of the runway behind that. I would say something like this actually looks good. So now we are prepared for the takeoff. Let's go ahead and line our airplane up on runway 1 for left. When changing the brightness of the heads-up display, be aware that you still need to be able to see this over the runway lights. So if you have an airport that has particularly bright runway lights, then be sure to take that into account when adjusting the brightness of the heads-up display unit. So for our case, we're going to do an LNAV and VNAV takeoff. Runway heading 136 is set and the courses are set on both sides. The manufacturer of the HUD does not recommend a rolling takeoff, however the Boeing manuals do not prohibit it either. So, now that we are lined up on the runway, we can see the runway centerline symbol right over here. Our target is to line the nose of the plane up completely with the runway, and then we have our localizer deviation up here, which comes directly from the localizer and basically is the same as we have down here on the primary flight display. This should stay centered during the takeoff run, and that is going to be your indication that you are right on the center line. So, let's go ahead then. Start the timing, and let's take off. Stabilized. Set to take off thrust. So we make sure to keep the symbols aligned up here. That way we can make sure that we are still on the runway center line. Correct. So during rotation observe the tail strike speed limit and then we rotate to the target line up here. Okay. So that's the tail strike limit, just going away there, and this is our pitch target line for Toga. Gear up. And this little symbol in here is our flight director. So we now align the flight path symbol with the flight director as we can see right here and this is going to keep us straight on the flight path that we are supposed to follow
easy, isn't it? So, let's start the acceleration. Also note up here that we are currently more than 15 knots below the speed bug and that we are accelerating. So, flaps one. And flaps up. So, we are approaching the speed bug. Observe the um, deviation line coming up now. And the flight director starts commanding the first left turn. So, we are going to follow this. And we are about to reach the target speed, as we can see by the line vanishing from here. And accordingly, the flight director is commanding the continuous climb. Now we've got the further acceleration, since we've passed our speed limit point on the standard departure. And once again, simply align the flight path symbol with the flight director, and that's all you need to do. We don't even need to look at the speed tape, because our speed deviation bar up here tells us everything we need to know regarding our target speed. So right now, without even looking at the airspeed, I can tell that I'm about 2 knots too fast. So this is really all we need to look at right now, and by looking only at this, we are able to fly this airplane. Okay, and this shall conclude this video. I would like to thank you very much for joining, hope that you have enjoyed this one. If you did, then do let me know in the comments below if there is something new that you um, have learned in this video, and if there is something that you think I should include in the next videos. Surely coming up is going to be precision and non-precision approaches, and a visual approach as well, and we're going to feature all the different modes of the heads-up display. For now, thank you very much for watching. If you want to support the channel, you can do so using the Buy Me A Coffee link in the video description below, or by becoming a channel member that is going to grant you exclusive early access to newly released videos. For now, thank you very much for watching, and I'm looking forward to see you all again hopefully very soon.